Jellyfish. Are they jelly or are they fish? Let's find out. Hey guys, it's Brandon, and welcome back to another adventure in Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. Today we'll be learning about jellyfish, and specifically the Pacific sea nettle, which can be found in the eastern Pacific Ocean. Now I know I like my hands-on techniques of learning, and having you guys discover a lot by touching or going out and experiencing, but today I warn you to just use your eyes. Use your eyes only because jellyfish have stingers and they can hurt and in some species can even kill you if you're not careful. So with that out of the way, are you ready for your adventure? Let's dive in. Okay. All right, let's discover my first question of the day. Are jellyfish jelly or are they fish? Well, they are 98% water, so they can't be jelly. All right, so they must be fish. Problem solved, adventure over. Wait. What? They aren't fish either? Hmm. Well then, what are they? Turns out the jellyfish are actually plankton, which means they cannot swim against a horizontal current. Jellies can migrate vertically depending on the time of day and to be in the desired light level. They swim using pumps and contract they swim using pumps and contracting their bell to push water into a direction which causes them to move in the opposite direction. But they aren't the biggest travelers. They mainly like to travel with the current. Jellyfish are members of the phylum Nidaria, Greek for stinging nettle. They are in the class Scyphozoa, from the Greek word for cup. So they're stinging cups? Makes sense because of their shape and their stinging tentacles. There are over 1,000 species of jellyfish described to this date, and their tentacles can range from less than one inch to over 100 feet. I will be demonstrating the Pacific sea nettle, which can grow to a bell diameter of one meter or three feet and tentacle length of 15 feet in the wild. Aquariums love showing this species due to their bright golden yellow and red colors, but they keep the jellies small, on average 50 centimeters in diameter. Jellyfish are very bizarre creatures. They are transparent to semi-transparent, have radial symmetry like a wheel, don't have any bones, don't have a brain, they don't have a heart, and they don't have any blood. But they do have very basic nerve endings on their tentacles that can detect light levels and orientation in the water. Jellies are truly animals of instinct. They use their tentacles like large fishing nets draped in the water to catch zooplankton, small fish, and even crustaceans. These tentacles are covered in tiny organs called nidoblasts, which contain nematocysts, these are pressurized barbed stingers that are fired by a sensory trigger. They remain under pressure until the trigger is disturbed, then a tiny harpoon fires at an insane speed into the victim. This happens thousands of times along the tentacle. Oh, you thought that was bad enough? Think again. Let's add neurotoxin to the mix. Yes the same stuff that can cause paralysis and even death in high enough doses. The, the adult jellyfish are known as medusas, from the Greek mythological creature with snakes for hair that can paralyze foes and turn them into rock. Does that sound familiar? Luckily, the Pacific sea nettle is non-lethal to humans, but it does hurt. I was talking to my friend Cindy from Australia the other day, she said that the beach she used to go to would be closed during certain times of the year due to the presence of white sharks, box jellies, and the infamous Irukandji jellyfish, the world's most venomous jellyfish. I feel lucky for living in the Pacific Northwest, where our jellies hurt for most likely a few days, 
but theirs will hurt for a few months and require hospitalization. If you are stung, you can scrape off the remaining stingers with a flat edge, like a credit card. Then denature any unfired stingers with a change in pH. So it is common to use vinegar. But I must warn you, if you reverse this order, you have the potential to release all of the unfired stingers at the same time, which leads to more pain. Also, get medical assistance depending on your area just to be safe. Have somebody look at it uh, to determine if you need any further assistance. Some stings take effect immediately, but some are delayed 5 to 30 minutes. So let's review. Jellyfish are not jelly, and they are not fish. They are very strange creatures. They are radi radially symmetrical. They don't have any bones. They don't have any blood. They don't have any brains. And they have the potential to send you to the hospital. So be safe when swimming. However, I don't want this just to be a scare tactic for not for making you not want to go into the water. I want to I want you all to know that we can learn a lot from the jellyfish. It is thought that they can determine the health of our oceans and in turn the planet. So many institutes across the world are studying jellyfish health and behavior as a link to monitoring the health of the planet. Looks like we're all out of time for this adventure. I hope no one got stung. But if you did, remember to use a credit card to scrape off the tentacles and then use vinegar to deactivate the unfired stingers. This will make you smell like a pickle, but that's not the worst smell in the world. I can think of far worse. I'd like to thank you all for going on this adventure with me. I had a lot of fun learning about jellyfish and I hope you did too. Remember to go out to your local aquarium, or if you have the opportunity, go out to the, your body of water and go out and see these in the wild. Just remember, don't touch, just look. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe for more content. If you want to follow me and my progress in, while I'm doing my art and my, doing my research, or you have any questions about purchasing my art, my originals are up for sale, or my prints. I'm going to get prints in here soon. Um, just ask me. I will be getting them very soon, actually. So I'll be getting my uh, museum quality prints. And so look forward to that. If you want to follow me and keep in touch, make sure to follow me on my Facebook page, my Instagram, my Twitter, and my Google+. I use my Instagram a little bit more than the rest of my apps but I make sure to post to all of those platforms with the finished product. If you have any stories that you would like to share, make sure to write them down in the comment section below. I want to get as many people at, like, active in this group as possible. Now remember, if you learned something new or made a new discovery, share that discovery with somebody else because going on an adventure is always more fun when you do it with somebody else. Have a wonderful day of excitement. I've been Brandon, and I'll see you in our next adventure.